in this demonstration I'm going to show you the new business intelligence tool from Microsoft called Power BI uh, which is part of the Office 365 suite. So here I am in my Office 365 uh, Outlook email and by selecting the waffle bar I can see Power BI is one of the options. This will obviously sign me in with the same uh, Office 365 credentials that I already have. In the left hand corner here you have different workspaces, so uh, it defaults into my workspace which is a private section and then these group workspaces I have here are part of uh, the pro licensing and I'm going to demonstrate some of the NCA data analysis. So by default it zooms into these dashboards uh, which can be interactive and give you a, a snapshot of insight. Uh, but I'm going to look at the uh, reports here, initially the university entrance analysis. I'm also going to uh, go into full screen mode. So this report gives an overview of how our um, students are tracking uh, with NCEA. Uh, in the middle we have a, uh, a, a column graph and the brown bars indicate the number of students per year level and the green bars indicate the students enrolled in NCEA. The reason why we have one in year nine would be uh, they're doing correspondence and in year 10 our top classes do uh, NCEA uh, science. On the left-hand side, we can see uh, a percentage value of literacy, uh, then the students' numeracy, and this is across all students. But what if I only want to see one year level? Uh, so, for example, if I'm interested in year 13, by clicking the column, everything changes contextually based off year 13. So now I can see that there are 89% of uh, year 13 have gained literacy. It's 163 students. There are four who have some uh, literacy threshold requirements that need checking uh, because of the reading and writing credits at level two. Everybody's gained numeracy and 5% uh, have already gained the 80 credits required at level three. And 3% 3 of the students, that's a total of five, have already gained 14 or more credits uh, in approved subjects for UE entrance. So that's really pleasing in three subjects. But what if I wanted to know who were the... Uh, the 11% who had not yet gained literacy. Well, I can do that. I can select this uh, other page, and by choosing year 13, I want to find out those that have not got literacy already. And in this case, zero equals no, haven't got it. And the students below are indicated as not having gained uh, literacy yet, and so I would follow up with those. What if I was interested in uh, finding out those who already have gained uh, the subjects? So three or more subjects and with 14 credits. These students have uh, found that. So the nice thing about Power BI is that it has uh, erases which work just like slices in Excel for clearing selections. And that will take you back to the overview. So the year level summary is really good at a, at a big high level picture, but what if I was wanting to zoom in on a particular student and find out about their university, university entrance uh, summary? This page now allows me to do that. So again, we have uh, year level selectors, uh, gender selectors, we can filter by tutor uh, or by just finding a student's name. So in this case, I'm gonna look for uh, a male in year 13 and this student here we now see um, has the reading threshold met yes for five credits has gained 22 writing uh, threshold uh, has also gained uh, 22 credits there so has the 10 literacy credits required has well passed the, uh, the numeracy requirement of 10 and the NCA threshold of 80 now has 82. Uh, when it comes to university entrance with approved subjects, you can see here Japanese, maths, and PE uh, exceeded the threshold bar, and the uh, subject progress indicates that as well. So the really nice thing um, we, we've achieved here is the setting of thresholds. So in the top right-hand graph, the 14 credit threshold is displayed, so it's a clear target, and in the literacy and numeracy, uh, along with the NCA credit threshold, you can see these set at 5 and 10 and 80 respectively. And this is actually all done in the MS query uh, in the background that's powering this, which is excellent. This is another uh, interactive uh, slide which is really powerful. Uh, on the right hand side here we see 
uh, the boxes and that indicates where the credits are being achieved uh, by a particular student and they're actually sliced into year level as well so when I select for example um, level 2 history I click that everything changes contextually gives me the number of credits obtained uh, 28 and the actual standards are listed down here on the bottom right as, low, as well as the grade that the student has obtained which is, uh, makes it really easy and by unselecting it again uh, it goes away for example in level 1 English everything changes uh, to show here so it does give you a lot of power to drill down into where students are actually getting uh, their credits work from uh, one thing I did forget to show was the ability we're just filtering based off uh, gender and new students versus existing so I could look at to see how our female students are tracking an NCA uh, from a literacy and numeracy perspective and we could put any filter we like there, Māori and Pacifica would be an obvious one that we might want to track um, borders versus day students might be another So another tool we have uh, developed is endorsement analysis. So again, if I come out of full screen view, I can choose this from the left hand side. So here we have a nice tool that gives an overview of a student's uh, credits. And uh, this is mirrored uh, very heavily on the NCEA uh, page. So we have total credits achieved by year level. So this student has across all three year levels achieved 291 uh, credits by standard type, achievement or unit standards. Uh, the third uh, bar graph is credits by level and assessment type, internal or external, and then lastly credits by level and results, so achieved merit and excellence. So the student is done, doing very well with 224 excellence credits. Again, all context sensitive, so if I wanted to see uh, the amount of credits achieved in uh, level 2 that were merit, I can click on that, and we get the split. So on the right hand side, 36 credits achieved. Uh, 29 of those were external credits, um, which is great to see, and all of them were achievement standards. Clicking anywhere will allow me to uh, unselect as well. So again, I might be interested in a year level, currently level 3. Everything changes, no external exam set yet, so it's 24 credits internally, of which all were excellence. One of the things that students are obviously really interested to know is around certificate endorsement and we've created a forecasting tool here which allows for uh, us to understand this. So this is a level 3 student, we can click uh, show us just level 3 and we get the forecasting. So uh, in the top right hand corner we have excellence endorsement, so a student needs 50 credits, uh, all excellence to receive uh, certificate endorsement and so we have set the threshold there where there's the orange dot. Uh, and then what we've actually done is put credits achieved already in the bank in red and then estimated grades for externals based off our practice exams in purple and these are stacked on top of each other to show a forecast of whether or not they're likely to receive an excellence endorsement so there's a little bit of work to go there and then merit endorsement alongside it again this can be merit or excellence credits aiming for 50 in total and the orange dot shows that if this student was to perform as they have in the practice exams and the, in the real externals then they're likely to get a merit endorsement at level 3. Because these grades uh, we have all the grades here we can choose um, level 2 and we can see the student easily attained merit endorsement and excellence endorsement. So this is a pretty uh, useful tool uh, for finding out how students are going to be tracking. A little bit more complex is student course endorsement and again we've got a level 3 student here and by choosing level 3 it filters down to show uh, the targets that they have here. So looking for those 14 credits per subject and at the moment uh, based off the merits looking like it's falling a little bit short because this does not include externals. This is showing what they've currently gained. Uh, so they do need to have two thresholds, three internals and at least three external credits. Uh, so for the internal credits, no problems, they've achieved those uh, in most subjects, but no externals because the externals haven't been set yet. We could have a look at the student for level two, of course, and we can see that uh, they did 
achieve ex excellence endorsements uh, across a number of subjects here. And we can filter those. So if we were only interested in history at level two, we can see they received excellence endorsement. What's probably more interesting, however, is student course endorsement forecasting. So this is saying which subjects is this student likely to be getting an, uh, an endorsement uh, based off their current internals they've already completed and their projected or forecasted externals. So let's look at level three again. And right now, merit endorsement. Uh, English is looking very likely as it's physics and a little bit of room to go for Japanese. Uh, an excellence endorsement, well English is looking uh, pretty probable as well and some of those other subjects are going to need a little bit of work. So again it's split internal credits as the middle graph here so we can see across most subjects three credits have already been achieved at excellence and below external credits these are all forecasted or projected results based off the practice exams likely to get the three credits but a bit of work to do for the combined to receive uh, an external uh, excellence or endorsement across all subjects. So there you go, there's an overview of how we're using Power BI um, with NCA University Entrance Analysis and Course Endorsement. Um, the powerful thing about this product is that it can be scheduled to refresh automatically from an on-site SQL server uh, and completely accessible based off AD groups through the cloud. And uh, we'll have more to say about this uh, soon. Thanks for watching.